Okay, this is my 13-year-old Honda HS1132, and I have just done some modifications on it, and I am going to have my handy-dandy flashlight here, so I'm going to take you on a tour of the modifications I did, and I also have some still shots that I will incorporate into the video as well that show it up a little closer. But um, so far, everything has worked really well. I might drop the uh, jet down a little bit, but um, most of the time it's working pretty well too, so I might keep it that way. Um, fortunately, I didn't start this video a few seconds earlier because the snow just came crashing down off my roof and I would have edit, edit out all those swear words if I had started it earlier. But here we go. This is my uh, new light. It's an Iron Ton LED. I'll put uh, links to that in the video. And it's a 1500 lumen, 15 watt LED light, 12 volt. And the output on the uh, Honda snowblowers that don't come with a battery electric start is uh, 20 volts AC when it's not under load. So you need to convert that to DC, 12 volt. And to do that, a lot of people are putting rectifiers in and building their own thing, you know, with a rectifier and capacitors to, to filter it out so the light's not flashing. And uh, you don't have to do that if you don't want to because they make the converter already. So here's where where the uh, if I get it cover it. Okay, there's where the, the wires come out of the uh, engine coil and it doesn't matter what color they are because it's AC. So here we are on the back side and I've mounted this all with double sided tape. This is my smackin' converter. I'll put a link to that too. But um, it has two red wires, and the two red wires go to those AC wires, and it doesn't matter which one connects to which, so you don't have to worry about that. And then it has a yellow wire and a black wire. And the yellow and black wire is the DC out, and um, it does matter on polarity on those. So you go to your light, um, you know, with the correct polarity. And on mine, I also went to a switch. And the reason these ugly uh, connectors are in here is because I added the, the tail light, which is right there. I added that just recently, and it was too cold to be outside soldering stuff, so I just quickly clamped those things on there. But I will be soldering it when the weather is a little nicer. And even though you don't have to do this, I did a lighted back off here. I did a lighted switch, so uh, let me see if I can get that in focus, but, well, I can't tell if it is. But anyway, I did a lighted switch, and uh, it's just kind of cool, you know? So I've got the, the tail light that covers the ground behind it. You Like when you're, when you're walking, you can see exactly what you're walking on because it's all lit up in red. And not to mention, if you're out next to the road, the... Uh, ground is lit up in red so somebody would see you and they'd know that's where the guy with a snowblower is. Let's run over him. Uh, actually my neighbor was uh, doing the end of the road recently and the uh, state truck came by and buried him. He was in his John Deere tractor and it just completely covered his tractor so he couldn't move. He had to get out with a shovel and dig himself out. I've actually already done most of the snow blowing, but I just want to try out the light. At night. There's only a couple inches of snow on the ground, so I'm just going to hit it a little bit. Mostly just seeing how the lights work.
I was intentionally moving the snow from side to side and in front of me just to see what it looked like with the uh, headlight shining on it. And then I stopped and stood to the side right there just to show the tail light.
All right, here we are going down the chute. My Honda HS1132 snowblower. And if you look right down there, you can see on the impeller, there's a piece of stainless steel with uh, two bolts going through it. And those are also stainless steel and stainless steel nuts on the other side, which are the lock nuts. And there's industrial strength rubber on that outside edge that closes up the gap between the outside of the housing and the impeller blade. And on a lot of snow blowers, there's a big gap there, so it makes a huge difference when you do this. It throws the snow much further, and it picks up all of the uh, wet snow. If you're, if you're doing wet, sloppy stuff, then it just throws everything out. So on a Honda, the clearances are a little tighter, so it doesn't make as much difference, but it does make a difference. So uh, you don't absolutely have to do it. All right, I've got to say, I've got a lot of respect for the people who do videos like this all the time and uh, trying to show exactly what's going on and keep things in focus. And um, whatever you're doing takes 10 times longer because you're trying to get video of it that everybody else can see instead of just doing it. But anyway, so you don't necessarily have to do this impeller modification uh, on a Honda, but it's kind of cool to have that little tiny bit extra even, you know, so that you can throw all the slush and snow into your neighbor's yard and make sure you you know reach the side of his house with it so just kidding just kidding but um, this uh, modification adds a pound to the impeller so you've got a greater moment of inertia there so it would probably um, have a little more torque to carry through that deep stuff that you run into uh, who knows but I've used industrial strength rubber on it and stainless steel so that uh, if I want to take it off, it won't be all rusted up and I won't have to jackhammer it to get it off there. But um, on, online you can find places, and I'll probably find the link to one of those too and put it on here, but of guys that have already made these things up so you can just buy the kit. And it's about 50 bucks, but it might be worth it not just to not, not have to uh, buy all the individual parts and pieces because um, just the bolts on it cost like seven bucks, so um, you wouldn't have to buy all the uh, separate pieces and drill holes and make sure everything fits. So they've got it, you know, contoured perfectly to it. So for fifty bucks, it cuts down the aggravation completely, and uh, you can have it done in very short order. And I just took the chute off up here and just uh, three bolts, and and the chute is off. And uh, Go back here on a wide angle if I can figure out how to do it. There we go. Um, anyway, you uh, just take those three bolts off and uh, do it right down through the chute with a one foot long drill bit. Don't have to take the impeller off to do it. I mean, some people do, but not worth it. It's, you know, just a matter of uh, minutes of uh, doing it. You know, it takes maybe 30 seconds to pop off the chute and just drill those holes and I used a uh, spring-loaded center punch so that I could get it perfectly centered and uh, also had the the plates so I could clamp them right down to it and get them perfectly in the right place so that it's well balanced because if you don't have it um, even on all of them it's gonna be spinning off balance and who wants that anyway so I ordered the flat bar cut to size from Midwest Steel and Aluminum, and it's called 304 Stainless, and they shipped it as if they were shipping a photograph. It's pretty funny. And uh, then I cut all the pieces to fit, uh, you know, had the rubber fit and drilled the holes and everything so that I was just ready to put them in there and drill into the impeller. And this is where I center punched it so that I would make sure that uh, even if the clamp slipped, I'd still be going where I started out here. And this is the finished product right here. You can see how tight it is on the bottom there to the edge of the impeller. And here it is in action.
right, I'm going to try to show you the uh, modification of the ground speed. So your hyd hydrostatic control is right here. If you go underneath, you can see what it does. And if you look carefully, the uh, cotter pin is kind of getting in the way here. Okay, there it is. Um, light it up a little bit with a flashlight. Okay, see the, the second hole on it? Um, if you take that cotter pin out and pull the pin out and move it when, when you originally get it, at least in the United States, it would be in that hole that's uh, further up there. So if you pull it to the one that's close to the end of the uh, lever itself, then it gets more travel, um, so it makes it go faster. And as far as I'm concerned, it makes it go faster in both directions. Some people think it only goes faster in reverse, but I think it goes faster in both directions. But you would have to uh, obviously uh, try it both ways and run it through a timed course to know that for sure. But it's a pretty easy thing to do, and it's well worth it, especially if you do have a place where you need to back up. I try not to back up any more than I absolutely have to, but if you have to back up, it's way faster with that pin on the outside hole. So do that. Here's another thing that not every snowblower comes with is the drift cutter. Um, it's really strong. You could actually pick the snowblower up with it. Sometimes when the snowblower is frozen into the ice, I just lift up on that and crack it loose. I put this uh, rubber over the corners here because the corners are really sharp and if you uh, slipped and fell down and smacked your face against that, it wouldn't feel very good. So. One more modification that was done by Honda. They don't do it unless you ask for it, unless you have a problem, but this rubber flange that goes around the carburetor, it, it picks up engine heat over here, and it directs some of that engine heat into the carburetor so that when it's really cold out, which it's very cold here quite often, and very dry snow, um, it sucks the snow into the carburetor and ices up the carburetor, and then it runs like the choke is on until it finally dies. So, without that, it won't even run on uh, a really cold day with fine snow. So, one of those essential things. I don't know why they don't just put it on all of them anyway. Because, you know, usually if it's snowing, it's cold. So another thing that I have done before is studded the track, and um, I used cold cutters, that's with a K, K-O-L-D, K-U-T-T-E-R-S, and they're used uh, for racing motorcycles and cars and stuff on the ice, but I'm not sure you can see it on this track, I guess go over to this track. Uh, most of the, most of those uh, wore out and fell off and I took the rest of them off but I did spot one here a while ago that was still on there but what I did was mounted them right on the uh, place where it comes together where you get the most rubber to uh, hook it into so it doesn't screw up the track and uh, they make studs now that you can screw in that are just like um, car tire studs have a carbide insert on them and you can screw those on. They have really wide screw threads so they stay in there. And uh, I may be doing that later. So this is the stock jet, main jet for the carburetor on the Honda HS 1132. And it is 0.98 of a millimeter. And I upgraded it to a larger one, which is 1.05 of a millimeter. And sometimes they refer to that as number 105 and the other one as number 98. But anyway, it uh, makes quite a difference in it. It's much more aggressive when it gets into the deep snow. It probably uses more gas because there's a bigger hole for the gas to go through. But uh, anyway, that's a good upgrade on it too. Uh, definitely 
um, seems to be working out well. I wasn't quite sure if I should go that high. I did find online that some people thought that was about the highest you could go. And it seems like most of the time it's pretty good. You know, it, every once in a while I think, ooh, maybe I should have gone just a little bit smaller, but I think it's working out okay, so. And now, right here we have the metal that I use to hold the um, impeller modification on. And the reason I have extra ones is because my brother has an HS928 and I'm going to do the mod for him at some point when he decides he wants to do it. So this is the rubber. Let's see if I can get that without this light here. But this is the rubber that I bought. And it comes in three foot long sections that's uh, two and an eighth inches wide. And you know, you can, I got that from Granger. So I'll put the link in for that. And the price on it with shipping was $24.83. So you can do a bunch of snowblowers with it if you have friends or you want to just do it for other people or they want to pay you to do it. The metal that I got uh, came, I, I had it cut specifically to length. I drilled the holes myself, but it would be much nicer if they drilled the holes too, and they probably would. But I got that um, for $18.77, including shipping, and I got six pieces of it, so enough for two snowblowers. And I got that from Midwest Steel and Aluminum in Minnesota.